Hi there, welcome back to Matt Plotlib's series of videos. Today I'm going to be talking about STEM plots. Before I go on, I would really appreciate if you like the videos and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post new videos. I have a lot of upcoming contents on pandas, seaborn, and everything data science, so stay tuned. I'm here on the official webpage of STEM plot from Matplotlib library. If you have been following my videos, you will know that I'm going through every function that is available for us in Matplotlib to plot different things to visualize. And also I'm taking you through how to present your data in best ways. The STEM plots are very similar to bar charts, but they have very slight differences that might be a storyteller if you are trying to present something different. Like bar charts, you have an x-axis and there is a y-axis. So y-axis shows the values of the variables you're trying to show and the x values could be different classes, different locations. We will get into that very shortly. Also, it's worth to mention that all the code and all the data that I'm going to be showing in this tutorial is in my GitHub repository. Feel free to download it from the link in the description and follow along with me. Let's make a new Jupyter notebook, rename it to matplotlib underscore number nine stem plots and from matplotlib import pyplot as plt. Like always, make a figure of big size equal to seven and seven. And we'll be, look we'll be looking at plt.stem and plt.show. Let's run this. This is not gonna show you anything because there is no data in this stem plot. So let me go ahead and clear the output because I don't like that red arrow thingy there. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and import some data. The data I'm gonna be bringing in is the data that I've been using so far in a lot of my videos. The data I have imported here is the age of the people who responded to a survey from the Stack Overflow website and their salary if they were Python developers. I used this data before to create a bar chart and a histogram, I believe. So feel free to go and check those videos out. I'll run this and I just wanna make a stem plot of age. So on the x-axis, I want the age and on the y-axis, I want their salaries. Let's look at this. Okay. This is pretty straightforward. As you can see, as the age goes higher on the x-axis, average salary of people goes higher as well. So this is a STEM plot. We could easily get this from a bar chart and that would probably be more useful depending on your use case. But there are a couple of different things that you can do with a stem plot that will make it even more useful than a bar chart. And I'm going to show you how. Before I go on, I'm going to add a title for this median salaries of Python developers. That's the title of the graph PLT X label. The X label is the H, which is also called the location for stem plots. And PLT Y label is cool. Now I have age here, salary here, and a title here. Let's start changing the visuals of this graph. So I told you that this is the location. So the location means that where do you want the base of each stem to sit and raise to the head? And this one is where the heads do you want to be? So the heads are these blue circles that looks like a lollipop. Now, what we can change in terms of aesthetics, the first one is the line format, which comes in line FMT. You can either have a bold line, which is the current one. So that's the default. It's not really going to change anything. But if you put two dash, you will get a dashed line. If you put one dash and one dot, you will get a dashed and dotted line. And if you just put a colon, you will get a dotted line. So this is the line format. I'll probably stick to the double dash one. The next thing you can change is actually the marker format. So the marker format currently is infill circles, but I can change them to um, say crosses and that will change these the tip of the lollipops as cross. You can actually add a, a color to it so it will make it red because R stands for red. You can make it green and so forth. The next parameter that you can change is the base format. If I say base format is blue, you will see a blue base format at the bottom. One more thing that comes very handy is the orientation. Now we have vertical stem plots, so this is not gonna change anything. But if I make it horizontal, if you wanted horizontal stem plot, you can easily change the orientation to horizontal. So this is all aesthetics and this is all very easy things to do. What I will do, I'll move all these aesthetics to the second line. I wanna play with some parameters that I find really interesting. I'll also change this to vertical. This 
this is where the power of stem plots comes into effect as opposed to bar charts. So you can see that we are starting at zero, but imagine based on your research, you're not interested in any salary between zero to $18,000. You want to place the base at $18,000. What you need to do, you will need to say bottom equals $18,000 thousand dollars what it will do as you can see here that blue line has shifted up and is currently sitting at eighteen thousand so if i make this fifty thousand you can see what group lies underneath that line of base and what group sits over that line this could be very handy if you found the mean if i were to draw this line over the mean of the salaries of python developers I can import the NumPy library as NP. Down the bottom here, I can say mean of Python developers equals np.mean of Python um, salary. So that's the mean. And I'm just gonna say, I want you to draw a line. I want you to base the bottom of this stem plot on the mean salary. So now you can see age of 35 kind of looks to be the age where younger than 35 gets paid less than the mean and older than 35 gets higher than the mean. If you find this, if you find reading the graph a bit difficult is because we don't have any grids. So if I add a grid to it with an alpha of 0.3, I can easily now say, yeah, confidently I can say, but age 35 and above gets paid higher than the average. The other interesting thing is that stem lines are treated as one entity. What I can do, I can actually say use line collection equals to false. What it will do, it will treat every one of those data points separately, which is really cool and can be really handy. Now, I'll probably change the marker format to default. And I guess the last thing that we can add is the label, which allows us to add a legend. The label can be Python developers, and I need to add a PLT legend. Python developers sits here as a legend. Okay, so stem plots, very short video. I don't have a lot to add to this one because um, that's all about it. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post videos. Thank you. Goodbye.